Amen. Welcome, brethren, to another devotional. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be at your feet, to learn, to learn at your feet, to hear from you, to be instructed, to be blessed, directed by you, covered by you, inspired by you. Speak to us, O God Almighty, even as we worship you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we want to look at the part two of uh, the topic, Can These Bones Leave? And our main text is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37. And for the sake of context and understanding, I would like to read that place again very quickly. I'm reading from the New King James Version. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord, you know. Today we want to look at the role of the Holy Spirit in this whole issue. What will make the dry bones to live again? Remember our topic is, can these bones live? And the man of God here said, thou knowest. And God said, prophesy. And at the end, the dry bones came back to life. So the answer is, yes, the dry bones can live. But it all depends on us as individuals, which we'll be looking at shortly. Holy Spirit has his role. And you and I have our own role. But our own role depends on the role of the Holy Spirit. And will depend on the power and the enablement of the Holy Spirit. Because we need the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to empower us, and empower the word of our prophecy. He is the one that will empower our decrees and our confessions. Whatever we say, we mean nothing and we carry no impact without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So we need to depend on the Holy Spirit. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, and you are not sure you have the Holy Spirit, then you need to surrender your life to Christ and ask him to come into you. Ask the Lord to give you this Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is free of charge. He will come into you. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. New International Version says. So he said to me. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might. Nor by power. But by my spirit says the Lord Almighty. Once again I submit to you that. The dry bones can live again. But only by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not by your might. Not by my might, not by your power, not by my power, but by the spirit of the living God. And that is the Holy Spirit. Oh, dry bones will live again. Dry bones shall rise 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 again. Lord Jehovah is able to do all things. Is able, able. Dry bones shall rise again. 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 Lord Jehovah is able to do all things, is able, able, dry bones shall rise again. Yes, dry bones shall rise again. It is possible by the spirit of the living God. Ezekiel was in the spirit. He said the hand of the Lord was upon him and carried him away in the spirit. So Ezekiel was in the spirit. If dry bones must rise in our lives or our lives or we ourselves must rise, beloved, even today in our businesses, in our homes, in our marriages, in our, in our everyday life, in our academics and career, then it will take the Holy Spirit. We must therefore be filled with the Holy Spirit and live and walk in the Spirit. Remember the man at the beginning in our introduction who was asked to cut a tree. I'll keep referring to that because it, that, that actually illustrates what we are all about in this topic. This man was asked to cut a tree and thought it was his duty to bring it down. At the end, the Lord told him, it's not your duty. It's my duty. Your duty is to cut. Keep cutting. Keep cutting. The bringing down of that tree is my duty. So 
We are not to bother ourselves or concern ourselves on how it's going to be done, when it should be done. All we should do is keep cutting. Our duty is to prophesy. But before you prophesy, beloved, pray that the Holy Spirit will move over the bad situation. Pray that the Holy Spirit will move over that condition, that those dry bones. Let the Holy Spirit move over them. Because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, Amplified Version says, The Spirit of God was moving, that is hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. So until the Spirit moved over the waters, until the Spirit brooded over the waters, until the Spirit hovered over the water and stirred up the waters, God did not start his creation. That is God Almighty. He had to wait for the Spirit to go ahead first, to stay and prepare the ground. Holy Spirit that you receive is the one that will prepare the ground of your heart. He's the one who will prepare the ground and hover over that situation and make it easier for it to receive your word and to hear your word and obey your word. So we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Until Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, he did not start his ministry. The Spirit of God came upon him. And the scripture also says, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. If God is not with you, if his hand is not upon you, like his hand was upon El Ezekiel, if his hand is not upon you, you cannot bring down any mountain, neither can your words that you speak make any meaning or impact on any dry situation in your life. So Jesus did not do anything except by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we need the Holy Spirit, beloved. The Holy Spirit is a promise the Father has given to us, to everyone who believes. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Until you are endued, it says stay in God's presence. Like the psalmist said in Psalm 91, verse 1 to 6, from the Amplified, it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust with great confidence and on whom I rely. For He will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Verse 4, He will cover you and completely protect you with His Pinions, pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. Verse 3 and verse 4 from the of that same chapter 91 of the book of Psalms from the, uh, the Passion Translation it says in verse 3, he will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy as you stay under his canopy, as you stay under his banner, as you remain in his presence. Uh, Ah, under his wings of protection, as you remain there, he says he will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy. My prayer is that today, that every one of you, that the enemy has set a trap for privately, in, in secret, without your knowing, may the Lord God Almighty rescue you from such hidden traps in the name of Jesus. You will not fall into any, any evil trap. You will not fall into any net of the wicked today in the name of Jesus. And he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. Verse 4, his massive arms are wrapped around you. Not only today, forever, as long as you remain in his presence, as long as you remain under his canopy, under his wings, and you trust in him. He says his massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you, and you can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. You see, you see what it means to have the Holy Spirit and to stay in God's presence until the Holy Spirit comes upon us. When we stay in his presence, what happens? The Holy Spirit incubates us. I had to check out the word incubate. It means from the from the dictionary uh, dot com, it says to sit upon eggs for the purpose of hatching, to hatch eggs as by sitting upon them or by artificial heat to maintain at a favorable temperature in, and in other conditions promoting development. So the mother hen sits on her eggs. The purpose is to hatch the eggs at the end, to hatch the eggs. But what does she do? She will sit on them, cover them, protect them, brood on them, 
produce some heat that will that will heat them up and keep maintain a stable temperature that the conditions will be favorable for them to develop until they hatch and that is what the holy spirit does when we stay under the holy spirit he will cover us with his wings sit upon us brood on us by his natural supernatural heat to help maintain favorable temperature and condition around us that will help our development until we are ready to hatch, as we are ready to manifest our power and our glory, until we are ready to attain higher heights and become what he wants us to become in life. We need to stay under the Holy Spirit for incubation. What does incubation to incubate mean? To nurture, to nurse, to, to develop. It means to sit on. To incubate means to keep warm. To keep alive, it means to protect, to shield, to secure, to shelter. Incubate means to cover, to safeguard, to buffer or cushion as a shock absorber. That is exactly the work of the Holy Spirit. That is what the mother hen does to the eggs as she sits on them. And we will not let any enemy come near them. But if any egg strays away, is on its own, is unprotected, can easily be devoured and will not be fully developed. And eventually will be rejected even by the mother hen because it did not stay on that the, his, her refuge, it did not stay under her tutelage, it did not stay under her, her warmth to be warmed up. So it becomes a, an easy prey for the wicked. So if you do not remain in the, in the presence of the Holy Spirit for long and, and continue to remain there and you leave that presence, you become half baked. Half baked, the half baked Christian is very dangerous. You think you are standing, whereas you have fallen and you become an easy prey. So let's learn to stay in God's presence until the Holy Spirit comes upon us and sits on us, covers us to be incubated. Let us not go away from his wings so we can optimize our potentials and go far in life doing exploits to his glory. It is the spirit that quickeneth. John chapter 6 verse 63. The Holy Spirit is the one that empowers our decrees, that strengthens us, that warms us up and bruises on us and incubates us to bring out the best in us and maintain favorable condition in and around us. Acts 1, 8, and ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. We'll need this power to be able to bring these dry bones back to life, to be able to command any situation in our life to hear the word of God. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. So our memory verse for today is taken from Psalm 91. Verse 3 from Passion's Translation. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy, and he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. So, beloved, let us pray and say, Lord, have mercy on me. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God. And if you do not have the Holy Spirit, probably you are not born again. You can say with me, Lord God Almighty, I, today I surrender my life to you. I believe in Jesus Christ that he's the, my Lord and Savior. He died for my sins and he resurrected so that I might live. I believe in my heart and I confess it. Jesus Christ, you are Lord indeed and Lord over my life. Take charge and take control. I surrender all to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You've just done that. Congratulations. By the grace of God, my faith, you are born again. Just find a Bible-believing church. The faith will be committed in services, in communion with other beloved brethren of the Lord and studying the word of God every day and praying and remaining his presence under the wings of the Holy Spirit. And for sure, you will make it here on earth and in time to come, eternal life. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for a wonderful day. We thank you for a glorious time in your presence, O God. Beloved, let us pray and say, Lord, empower me. Empower the words of my mouth, O God. Give me power. Give me strength in the name of Jesus. We need to also pray and use that same scripture that we, we, we read a while ago uh, from the Passion's Translation, uh, Psalm 91, verse 3 and verse 4. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy and will protect you from false accusations. So let's pray, Lord, for God. Rescue me, O God, from the hidden trap of the enemy. Let those traps catch their owners. Let those traps ensnare their owners. Uh, in the name of Jesus, pray, beloved, and say, Lord, protect me from every false accusation. Father, come to my aid. Come to my rescue. Help me, Lord. Defend me, O God Almighty. Let them be ensnared by their own accusations and let their evil accusation against me hold no water in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. It says there also that he will rescue you from any deadly cause. So now open your mouth and begin to decree 
every deadly curse against my life uh, be nullified in the name of Jesus. So I'm free from every deadly curse uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Amen. And let us pray, verse 4. Pray, Lord, let your mighty hand, arms uh, continually uh, be around me, O God. Uh, protect me, Lord, even today. Protect me. Wherever I go, protect me. In the day, protect me. Even at night, protect me. When I sleep, protect me. Protect me, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Begin to pray. Today, as I go out and as I come in, I will be shielded by the power of the Holy Spirit, from, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit from every harm, from every coronavirus, from every COVID and every coronavirus victim. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So I'll pray for you now. Father, I pray, using Luke chapter 21, verse 15, Holy Spirit of God, you are the wisdom of God. Please direct and empower the words of your children today. Holy Spirit of God, grant them that wisdom as they prophesy with their mouth, O God. Empower, O God, and let the words be wise, wise words. Let the words be efficacious words. Let the words be effective in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you give your children a mouth and wisdom that all their adversaries will not be able to withstand or resist in the name of Jesus. That no drive will be able to resist in the name of Jesus. I also pray based on Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will empower your spirit, man. It will turn, uh, who in turn will empower your, the words of your heart. And bef before your mouth utters them in the name of Jesus, I pray the angels of God will go into action to bring whatever you utter with your mouth, we bring them to pass in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to your name. I dedicate and I rededicate your children into your hands, O oh God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I decree a blessed day, a wonderful day, a glorious day, a testimony filled day in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Don't forget, beloved, Jesus loves you. And don't forget, righteousness exhausts a nation. Their sin is a reproach to any people. God bless you. Bye.